In the vast expanse of human history, few books have sparked as much discussion, debate and controversy as the Bible. The book of Genesis, in particular, has been a subject of intense scrutiny. The tales it weaves, the lessons it imparts and the questions it raises continue to confound and fascinate us. But why is this so and what does it mean for us today? Differing interpretations of the book of Genesis have created a chasm between literalists and those who read the text metaphorically or symbolically. On one side, there are those who view the creation account as an exact historical record. They hold steadfast to the belief that the world was created in six days and all life was formed as described in the scripture. On the other side, there are those who propose a symbolic interpretation. These individuals often reconcile their faith with scientific understanding, viewing the creation account as a representation rather than a strict historical or scientific record. They find harmony between religious beliefs and scientific discoveries, such as the theory of evolution. But the debate does not end with creation. Ethical questions also arise from the text. What is the nature of God? How should we treat animals? Such questions continue to perplex theologians and believers alike. Once again, we find ourselves amidst a myriad of perspectives influenced by different religious traditions and personal beliefs. Ultimately, the interpretation of these texts is a deeply personal matter. It is shaped by our faith, our values and our understanding of science and religion. It's a journey of reconciliation, of seeking harmony between our spiritual beliefs and our understanding of the world around us. But here's a thought for consideration. Does science and religion truly belong together? 20 years ago, I would have said no, but today? The prospect of integration doesn't seem so far-fetched. It's not about taking one side as the absolute truth, but understanding that there are equal parts and measures to consider. It's like comparing men and women or adults and children. Is it fair to say one is better or smarter than the other? And speaking of children, how are we shaping their understanding of these complex issues? In the end, understanding and equality in interpreting religious texts are not just important, they are imperative. They allow us to respect and appreciate the diversity of beliefs that exist in our world. It's not about agreeing on one interpretation, but acknowledging that multiple perspectives can coexist. This is the beauty of humanity, our ability to understand, to empathize and to grow. So until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring and most importantly, Keep striving for understanding and equality. See you soon.